بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Though we're on the recitation of the ninth juz, uh, there's some elements of the eighth juz that I wanted to continue with from yesterday's recitation. Um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the previous or some of the previous nations and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them to task. Uh, so up until now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been continuously repeating the concept of Tawheed, of Risala, of Akhira, and to re-emphasize this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives examples of previous people that rejected the Risala and ultimately what was their fate and a two-pronged discussion by Allah or two-pronged benefit is that this was also to console, like I said, continuously console the Prophet wasallam, that there were prophets that came before you and they were also rejected. Um, one of the most devastating, the, the message itself wasn't, it's, it had a very heavy effect on the Messenger wasallam, of delivering the message, but weighed, what weighed tremendously on Rasulullah is how people rejected the Prophet knowing that this was the truth and that deep concern of pulling people away from the fire and taking them to the eternal bliss of Jannah, yet the refusal of people. So Prophet couldn't understand that this is so obviously and blatantly the truth and I'm trying to t- take people away from misguidance, from angering Allah and I'm trying to take them towards the truth. But despite it being so glaringly obvious the rejection and at times the rejection was nothing more than just enmity and hostility no other reason for rejection so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some previous people and their prophets so I thought it's good to go over them in a very summarized quick way inshallah Allah begins with لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا Nuhan of the stories of the previous prophets he starts with Nuh ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wassalam Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam is approximately five centuries his existence after Sayyidina Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wassalam and he is the first prophet of Allah who had to combat disbelief. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was sent as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam dealt with legislation of being established on the earth, what are the rules, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. He never, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, never went through the concept of combating someone who disbelieved in Allah. The first prophet or the first messenger to do so was Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina wa salatu wassalam. And so we know the story, there's an entire chapter dedicated to Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam in the 29th juz, Surah Nuh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam called his people for 950 years to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so... Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. Fakala ya kaum yabudullah malakum min ilahin gayru. We'll start with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Indeed, we sent Nuh to his people and he said, O my people, worship Allah malakum min ilahin gayru. There is no deity other than him worthy of worship. Inni akhafu alaykum adhab yawmin azim. Indeed, I fear upon you a day of severe punishment. So now the response, what, was, what did the people say? And this, the reason why we're going to go through this is that what you'll find is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
mentions their disbelief, they're going against Tawheed, alongside certain traits of that people, of why he destroyed them. So Allah speaks about disbelief, but alongside that disbelief, there are traits that they possessed, that they possessed which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like. And Allah warned through the Prophet that let go of this belief and let go of this, these traits or these beliefs, lest I punish you. And the reason why I say it's interesting is that these were single things that stood out amongst those people and Allah destroyed them. We, as an ummah, you will find, we possess all of these traits. What other nations were... Sing, because of that single trait, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disliked them such that alongside their going against Tawheed, Allah decided that was enough to eradicate them. And when I mean eradicate, their signs were removed from this earth in terms of their existence. Allah simply left their uh, sort of ruins behind. The entire generation was wiped out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is, this is truly... The only reason is because we are the Ummah of Muhammad The amount of gratitude that is owed to Rasulullah Allahu Akbar. Like I said, the single reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eradicated previous nations, we find all of them within us. All of them. All those traits we possess. Allah speaks about Arrogance upon strength, we have that. Arrogance against, upon skill, we possess that. Allah speaks about homosexuality, it's rampant in our society. Allah speaks about the evil of people who are uh, not, don't act with justice in their business, it's present in our society. All of them are present in our society. But because of the fadl of Allah, because of being the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ SubhanAllah, because being, this, being from this Ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I will shower my grace on this Ummah that I will never collectively destroy the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu as long as there are one of two things. The first, أَنْتَ فِيهِمْ as long as you, O Muhammad وسلم, reside amongst them, I will not punish the entirety of the population. And number two, وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ What happens after the Prophet goes away? Such as the, the favor of Allah and the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, says, fine, even if the Messenger was not present, as long as there are people who do istighfar and seek the repentance from Allah, I will not collectively punish the Ummah. So, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam's people, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was sent in an area uh, near Iraq. And he calls them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, 950 years he gives them this dawah. It also, it also highlights how we have to be patient with dawah. It also highlights... Don't expect, look at, look at the perseverance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instills into Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. 950 years of rejection, mainly, only a pocket. They say in the books of tafsir, the people that come on the ark of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam totaled 80 people. Everybody else denied him. So at times when we're giving da'wah, not necessarily even to other people, you know, even family members. Not everybody is on the same level of iman. So sometimes there will be family members who, in our view, outwardly, they're not practicing. What's their maqam with Allah? We don't know. What is their position with Allah? We don't know. But outwardly, they don't seem to be religious in our eyes. And so we want to give them da'wah. Don't expect that that da'wah is effective immediately. Patience. Patience and wisdom. And insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mend the ways. 
It's a very important lesson that's taught to us. So the people they say, "Qal al-mala'u min qawmi," the chieftains of his group of his people say, "Inna la naraka fi dharani mubin." We perceive you to be an open misguidance. We're not misguided. This is what we know. You're misguided. Qal ya qawmi la yasbi dhalala, walakinni rasul min Rabbi alamin. So much, so much is taught in these verses of the Holy Quran. The response of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to being called a misguided, he says, no, no, simple. I'm not misguided, I'm just the messenger of Allah. No argument, no shouting back, no becoming aggressive. Just a very simple statement. Laysa bi dhalala. I don't possess the misguidance that you're talking about. Walakinni rasulun min rabbil alameen. I'm simply a messenger from Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, the Lord of the Universe. And why have I come to you? أُبَلِّغُكُمْ رِسَالَاتِ Rabbi. I'm simply here to convey the message of my Lord. وَأَنصَحُ لَكُمْ and advise you. وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ As I know from Allah what you don't know. And then he, he, he relays to them why they're objecting. أَوَعَجِبْتُمْ أَنْ جَاءَكُمْ ذِكْرٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ أَلَا رَجُلٍ مِّنْكُمْ لِيُنْذِرَكُمْ He says, Do, are you surprised? The reason why you're objecting is that the message has come, the revelation has come to a person from their Lord, from amongst you. Meaning, you expected that Allah send an angel. And there's a discussion, why didn't Allah? Why did Allah send men to convey this message? Why was man used to deliver Allah's message? Imagine the excuses we would come up with had Allah sent an angel to deliver the message and show us the practice, imagine the excuses we would have used to say, well, I can't be like that. That's an angel. Allah is ahkamul hakimin. He is the most wise. Had Allah sent angels down to us to deliver the message, show us the sharia, this is the salah, the first thing we would have said, well, that's alhamdulillah, is great, but I can't do that because, you know, the angels are different to us. So Allah says, no, I'm going to send you people from amongst you. So Nuh alayhi salatu he says, that, why are you surprised with this? There is a lot of wisdom as to why Allah has sent me from amongst the people. فَكَذَّبُوا They belied him. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ فِي الْفُلْكِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we saved him and those that were with him in the ark وَأَغْرَقْنَا الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا And we drowned those individuals that belied our signs. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كُمْنَا They decided that, fine, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send the punishment through the flooding, then we'll retire to the mountaintops. How will Allah reach us there? How will Allah reach us there? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this arrogance... That I am above the reproach of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. How rampant is that attitude in our society today? That I am above Allah's reproach. And this isn't just directed at, at, at non Muslims. How many Muslims have that arrogance? That I am above Allah's reproach. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, and there's succession. From the progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu is his son Sam. And from the progeny of Sam, there are two individuals. Um, one, in, sorry, Iram is from the progeny of Sam, and his grandsons are both Thamud and Ad. So Ad and Thamud are individuals that are directly from the progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Through an individual named Iram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, To Ad I sent their brother, Akhahum. Allah makes it very specific that the prophets were from them. Wa ila Adin Akhahum, their brother, Hud alayhi salatu was salam. Hud alayhi salatu was salam was sent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now this is where we need to reflect on the sins. Qala ya qawmi abudullah malihi. Allah, in all of these stories, He gives the same theme and message from the prophets to the people. What? 
Allah, worship Allah. And there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. So the fundamental basis of religion is established and the same message is given by all of the prophets to all of their people. The same message of Tawheed. The oneness and unity of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. This is fundamental in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, there is no scope of error in, in, the, in respect of Tawheed. There is scope of error in terms of ibadah. You can go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you could have made mistakes in your ibadah. Insha'Allah, thumma insha'Allah, Allah will forgive us insha'Allah. All of us are going to go to Allah and we have mistakes that we are going to go with. We have sinned, we have erred, we have disobeyed Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. The best amongst us. But inshallah, there is hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overlook those mistakes, those faults. But tawheed and, under, and accepting the oneness and unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you return to Allah not having that intact, not having died being a muwahid, one who testifies to the oneness of Allah, and instead dies as one who associates partners with Allah. Then we've read in our previous recitation in the fifth juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Indeed, most definitely, bit ta'keed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with emphasis, indeed Allah will not forgive that individual who associates partners with Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. Allah will not forgive the concept of shirk. And other than that, Allah will forgive whatever He wants. So the common theme that Allah is repeating over and over through all the prophets, the first thing, like He says here, Ya qawm, عُبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُهُ O oh my people, worship Allah, there is no deity save Him. No one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Will you not fear Allah? قَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Allah, again this theme, he's using similar words. Who are usually the people that object? The leaders. The one with power. The one who dictates society, shapes society. So in the first instance with Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, qala al-mala. The leaders said, here as well, qala al-mala ulladhina kafaru. The leaders who have disbelieved and belied Allah, they said to the people, min qawmihi, they said to him from his people, inna la naraka fi safaha, wa inna la nadhunnuka min al-kathibin. We consider you to be from the foolish people. First ones, they said, you're misguided. These people, they said to Hud we consider you to be from the foolish people. And we take you to be from those that, have, that lie. You're from the beliers. You're making this up. All of these accusations were repeated to the Prophet as well. Allahu Akbar. The same things. That you've made this up. It's something that you've bought, conjured, etc. Qal, again, a similar soft response. I'm not foolish. I'm not foolish. And the, the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing is the Prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam, they actually they have affection, they care for the ummah. You know, sometimes you have someone who just delivers the message, but the one who's delivering the message really doesn't, it's just their job. But they're not really, they don't have no affection to the person they're delivering the message to. Yeah? It's just an employed person and that's their job. The prophets of Allah not only bring the message, they are affectionate towards those that are, they are delivering it to. They actually feel for them. They're not just delivering a message. They are hurt. The Prophet وسلم, is standing at night 
to the point that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that he would stand for such prolonged periods that his feet would become swollen due to excessive standing. And much of the crying and the sobbing of the Prophet would be about his ummah, ummati. Such is the concern of the Prophet that this concern for his people is not only limited to this world. Imagine that. We know the very famous hadith where on the day of judgment, all the prophets will be approached to commence the reckoning. They will go to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, they will go to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, they will go to Ibrahim al Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam, etc., etc. And when they ask that, can you come and be, you know, intercede on our behalf in front of Allah? They are Allah, this day is too difficult to bear now, start the reckoning. Each prophet will say, nafsi, nafsi. I can't, I can't think beyond myself at the moment to worry about you. And a prophet, each prophet will think of something that they think will be the cause of anger in respect to them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they'll remember that. Adam alayhi salatu wasalam will say that Allah, he commanded me to stay away from this tree, but I made the mistake. And each prophet will think of one of those mistakes. Except who? Except Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And where every other prophet is saying, nafsi, nafsi, what will the prophet say? Ummati, ummati. So the affection that the prophets, they carried, it's, it's where they're saying, Ana lakum nasihun ameen. I'm someone that's come, that has good counsel, and I'm a trustworthy person on your behalf. Same thing. Are you shocked that Allah has sent someone from amongst you? وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ جَعَلَكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قَوْمِ نُوحِ وَزَادَكُمْ فِي الْخَلْقِ بَسْطَ Remember how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you the vicegerents after Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam's people. Allah gave you, Allah gave you, uh, in fact, uh, when Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam is saved, Everybody that disbelieved is wiped out. Like I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these occasions, He wipes out the entirety of the people. In the books of Tafsir is mentioned that the Prophet said that there is one individual who... Khair. So فذ... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you the vicegerents after Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam وَزَادَكُمْ فِي الْخَلْقِ بَسْطَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased you in strength. So, the people of Hud, Qawmi Ad as they're known as, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them immense strength. Much, much is mentioned in the tafsir of how that, dis, how that strength was displayed. That they could rip trees out of the ground from their roots, etc, etc. Whatever that may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them through the Prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Hud, that that is Allah's atiyah. Allah has gifted you. Don't let that lead you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, قَالُوا أَجِئْتَنَا لِنَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ وَنَذَرَ مَا كَانَ يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا Have you come to us? Has, have you come to us so that we worship Allah alone and leave that which we found our forefathers on? Once again, the arrogance builds. They have strength. So what do they say? فَأْتِنَا بِمَا تَعِيدُنَا Allahu Akbar. I said, fine. Tell Allah to bring this punishment upon us. فَأْتِنَا بِمَا تَعِيدُنَا إِن كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ They challenge Allah Rabbul الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ to bring about the punishment from Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys the entirety of the people. قال قد وقع عليكم من ربكم رجس وغضب أتجادلونني في أسماء سميتموها أنتم وأباؤكم ما نزل الله بها من سلطان فانتظروا إني معكم من المنتظرين. Wait. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about his punishment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how he saves 
Hud alayhi salatu was salam and those that are with Hud alayhi salatu was salam wa qata'na dabir alladhina kathabu bi ayatina and he uproots those individuals who belied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and among, around the same time or around the same time there were the people of Thamud again from the ancestors of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam from the people of Iram and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I sent to them an individual, a brother, their brother, Salih alayhi salatu was salam. <coughs> Salih alayhi salatu was salam gives them the same message. Says that signs have come to you from your Lord. Those signs are referred, that, that are being referred to is a miracle. The people of Salih alayhi salatu was salam they had asked Salih alayhi salatu was salam that if you are from Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal then show us, prove it to us. So Salih alayhi salatu was salam said what do you want from us as a proof? What is the proof that you want? And so they said that if you are from Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal then you see that mountain we want you to ask your Lord to take out from the mountain a pregnant she-camel, a pregnant camel. And the condition is that it has to be 10 months pregnant. So they thought, the whole reasoning behind this is let's ask for something absurd. Let's ask for something that can't happen. And when he can't do it, it's a reason for disbelief. Once the Quraysh came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you want us to believe in Allah? Fine. We ask you to do one thing. We want a miracle. We want something extraordinary to take place on your hands and then we'll believe. So the Prophet said, what do you want me to do? So they pointed to the Mount of Uhud and they said, that ask your Lord to turn this mountain into gold for us. Ask your Lord to turn this mountain into gold for us. So the Prophet subhanAllah, he said, will you believe then? If I ask my Rabbi and he does this, will you believe? They say, yes, of course we will believe. So the Prophet goes to raise his hands to make dua and Jibreel comes down. And Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, even if we were to turn multiple mountains into gold, forget Uhud, the mountains adjacent to it, in front of it, if we were to turn, turn them all into gold, I swear by Allah they will not believe. And if you make this dua and Allah accepts and turns it into gold, and then they refuse belief, then understand that the result of that what Allah will destroy them. Allah will destroy them. Just like Isa alayhi salatu was salam said that they asked, the people of Isa asked them to ask your Lord, anzil alayna ma'idatan min as sama That bring down for us a placemat or a table to eat from, from the heavens. But they insisted. So Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he requests Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fine, I will do it. But if there is disbelief afterwards, then if they disbelieve afterwards, I will... Sh- bring down upon them a punishment the likes of which no one has seen before. So after you ask for a miracle and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants that miracle, then disbelief won't be tolerated by Allah Rabbul Jalal. So the people of Salih alayhi salatu was salam, they ask for the she camel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi makes the dua and from the rocks appears a she camel, 10 months pregnant. Salih alayhi salatu was salam, he says, Allah has given you this miracle. 
a lot of people at that moment accepted Islam. Some were on the verge. And the leaders of Salih, of the group of, uh, of the people of Salih, والسلام, intervened and told them that, wait, wait, this is a deception, don't just believe yet, etc., etc. Salih والسلام, said to them, this is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's living within us or amongst us. Be mindful of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps this animal alive amongst them and it begins to graze and drink from the lands that they occupy. It was such that there was a tremendous amount of food and water that it could consume. And so Salih suggested that there's a well, we will make the well one day for us, one day for the animal. So this animal would come, consume, and it's in the, in the tafsir of Qurtubi it's mentioned that on the day that it would consume the water, it would provide milk, and the milk would be sufficient for the water that, the water that was lost. But people become, you know, uh, the greed, the desire for what they want, it overwhelms people, they can't see that I'm getting a substitute. So they, 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 they conjure a plan that how do we, one is, let's hope this animal dies. After a few days where it doesn't die, how do we get rid of it? But they saw that this is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't harm it, or we shouldn't harm it, otherwise it's going to be very devastating for us. So what shaitan does is he, he uses temptation. From the ploys of shaitan that he manages to convince us to do wrong is that he tempts us with things. And he lures us with temptation. And for every individual the temptation will be different. In this case, he lures two individuals with the temptation of women. The two women present themselves and say that whoever kills this animal, we are theirs. And so two individuals, Misda and Qadar, they set out to kill this animal and they kill this animal. One strikes, one throws a spear through it and the other one chops its legs off and it dies. And at that junction, Salih says, that's it. Now there's no hope for you. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take you to task. And again, arrogance, it's, it's a common theme with people of the past. And again, it's a theme that we possess today as well. Very arrogant in relation to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has said, we might not be arrogant with words. We might not say the words of arrogance, but our actions are very arrogant. These people used to say, like, they, they turn around to Saudi Islam when he says, you're going to be punished. They say that if you don't pray, this is the result. We hear that this will be the punishment. We're not unaware. Alhamdulillah, we live in a society where knowledge is so rampant, it's so available. Most of us are aware of a hadith that our parents never heard of. The truth. Because of how much knowledge is, uh, is available. But we're so arrogant to that knowledge that Allah says you have to do this. No, I'm not going to do it. Allah is saying this is a must. But our arrogance takes over. So Salih warns them what happens after this warning. And inshallah, the next two groups that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, we will continue with that tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, save us from these evil sins that cause anger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our families. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us devout to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allow us to worship Him in the manner that pleases Him. Wa akhiru dawan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanakallah bihamdik. Wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nasafir wa natubu ilayhi. Jazakumullah.